Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us on PeerBridge's first 10-minute parcel tip micro webinar. The topic today is surviving the shipocalypse. What do you do when COVID-19 consumers, culture, and carrier capacity collide? It's no secret that COVID-19 has accelerated the shift to e-commerce, creating a sustained and prolonged peak shipping season. Some parcel volumes are being metered or even refused. Many shippers are scrambling to get their orders delivered. Reducing your dependency on parcel, diversifying modes, and expanding your carrier options can complement capacity crunch carriers and help you affordably meet your customer delivery promise. My name is Scott Moore. I'm the VP of Marketing for PeerBridge. I'm joined today by longtime partner Lance Healy, co-founder of Banyan Technology. Our software is integrated, enhancing both products with our expertise in small package and Banyan Technologies' expertise in LTL and local courier. Let's quickly look at the situation we're all facing as shippers. And in doing so, we're going to go for a world record for the number of alliterations on a single slide. Credit to our good friends at Pitney Bowes for the When Consumers, Culture, and COVID-19 Collide headline that we're building on by adding a couple more C's, carrier capacity, something we're calling pandemic parcel pandemonium. Regarding the impact of COVID-19 on retail, according to Forbes.com, this Black Friday, Store shopper visits were down around 50%. This is critically a make or break day for many retailers. Consumers are increasingly shopping online. According to a new Pitney Bowes box poll, more than half of consumers report shopping online now versus pre-pandemic. This is leading to a potentially permanent culture shift. According to that same box poll, 73% of consumers say they've enjoyed shopping online more than they expected. 28% of them are searching for new brands or new sites. It's clear that many of the social and economic behaviors Americans have adopted recently are likely to outlast the virus. This has resulted in a carrier capacity crunch with no sign of letting up. According to Supply Chain Dive, UPS 13% year-over-year consolidated volume increase for the quarter ending September 30th. UPS's less profitable residential deliveries were up from 50% to 70% of total volume. We're seeing a similar story with other carriers. This is compounded by the holidays, not to mention the COVID-19 vaccine distribution. And the headlines and quotes are scary and sometimes a bit hilarious. We're not the only ones guilty of a little dramatic editorial license. The pundits are using words like ship a in ship a thon We've picked up on this with a term we can't take credit for, shipocalypse. My personal favorite, Nightmare on Parcel Street, conveys the image of Freddy Krueger terrorizing a neighborhood. The solution lies in robust multi-carrier software, so you can find complementary carriers and modes. Without this capability, as one pundit puts it, shippers are sitting ducks. Before we get to those solutions, let's ask Lance to dig into those challenges shippers are facing from the collision of COVID-19, consumers, culture, and carrier capacity. Thanks, Scott. Well, the largest impact is clearly on the retailers. So the e-commerce surge is a huge revenue boom, but the surcharges and restrictions from the carriers is putting a ton of pressure on the retailers to meet the customer promise of fast, low cost, and on-time deliveries. So that's feeling a dramatic impact on the retailer's bottom line, especially their margins and profitability. On the other side, for the carriers, the massive swing from the commercial to the residential and corresponding loss of profitability for the carriers is driving all of them to raise prices. The trend isn't going away, so I expect many of these adjustments will remain long after the holiday season. A couple specific examples. In May, there was a $0.30 cent increase per item on UPS ground and Sherpo shippers, whose weekly volumes had increased dramatically since COVID started. UPS also added a surcharge of $31.45 for shippers who send more than 500 large packages in a week. Naturally, a month later, FedEx followed suit, adding their own residential delivery charge of $0.30 cents per package for enterprise-level shippers whose volume increased post-COVID. Additionally, FedEx also imposed an oversized charge of $30 per package and $0.40 cents per package for oversized FedEx smart posts. For the first time, the USPS even increased their fees on commercial shipments during the Christmas shopping season. That's needed to, to offset the higher expenses and volumes. Just to put it in perspective, last year there was a discrepancy of about 2 million packages that needed to be shipped versus the capacity to process them. This year, that same discrepancy is estimated to be over 7 million packages looking for space on a truck. And that was provided
provided before the vaccine distribution was announced. FedEx, UPS, smaller carriers are all turning away customers as they're bracing for their surge of online orders. One of my favorite quotes in the Wall Street Journal was, one holiday item already sold out is shipping capacity, and any extra trailers with holiday orders will probably have to wait to be picked up. This is really the reality of the, the retail shippers are facing, but it also impacts the commercial industrial clients. B2B consumers, are, our customers are not immune and will feel the impact. Scott, you and I have an advantage of looking across hundreds of shipper clients and 3PLs and really want to share some of the best practices and solutions that we've seen that can help not just through the Shapocalypse and the COVID vaccine distribution, but well into the new reality of retail buying. So first and easiest step to take is really managing, working with your customers and managing the customer delivery expectations. By providing options, you can let them self-select on what's more important to them, price or timing, or if there's some incentives to increase the order size to more economically switch modes, finding alternatives to shipping altogether. UPS is already encouraging shippers to find alternatives and look at strategies to avoid shipping, like buying online and picking up in stores, restructuring their promotion timings, or even looking at availability of, of different packages. Lance, it's interesting that the major carriers are adopting some of the same strategies we're talking about today. FedEx Freight, I know, is helping the company cope with surging parcel and FedEx ground volumes by recently delivering more than 750,000 shipments for FedEx ground. This has never happened before. Yeah, that's really interesting because those same tactics that they're doing to try to survive can very easily be applied for, for shippers and 3PLs in the market. Diversifying your carriers with regional carriers, uh, regional LTO carriers, they can offer a wide array of different options to help keep your customer promises. A lot of the regional and courier companies can even make deliveries in their own markets within hours uh, because of their geographic focus. And LTL is a fantastic option for shipping where you've got higher volumes and, and less frequency to help preserve some of those margins and profitability. One of the solutions we have at Bandon that helps to maintain some of those promises for cost and delivery timing is our intelligent pricing solution. It allows the LTL carriers to automatically add spot quotes off of a contracted rate to attract the kind of freight that they want to better balance their network. But regardless of the solution you use, the mix of the carriers you use, the essential technology to make these changes quickly and efficiently are multi-carrier rating and execution tools, where a single integration is really all that's needed to then add more carriers into your provider network and your options, and with something as simple as account credentials. Great suggested solutions, Lance. So if you're a transferring user already, we can easily turn on Banyan Technologies Intelligent Pricing, allowing you to diversify into LTL. In addition, you can always add more regional carriers and local couriers, whether they're provided by PeerBridge or through Banyan Technology. This can be done either through our user interface or through our API. Getting these shipping options in place quickly can help you survive and thrive through the shipocalypse while maintaining margins and keeping your customers happy. Thanks so much for joining us today, Lance. My pleasure, Scott. Appreciate it. For our listeners and watchers, stay tuned for future 10-minute parcel tips or visit the resources section at peerbridge.com or visit banyantechnology.com to learn more. Have a great day.